ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वासुदेवा जॉय टू यू फ्रेंड्स वी आर रीडिंग जस्ट अ मोमेंट हियर गेट माय ग्लासेस आउट We're reading the 40th stanza of chapter 2. In this path of yoga there is no danger of unfinished business nor are there latent within it the opposite cancelling effects of duality. What this yoga does is cancel those effects themselves by you neutralizing the waves of reaction, changing your reactions up and down into the inner center in the spine that uses breath to get control of the energy and control of the energy to magnetize the spine and then bring that thereby bring all your consciousness into the spine now here you have the ultimate duality and it's not the same thing as duality because it's the outward moving power of maya and the inward moving power of spirit of om of divine love and these two are opposed to each other but you don't want to find the middle point in that the uh, when someone said why should I, i if i shouldn't have any desire then i shouldn't seek god i shouldn't seek salvation i shouldn't seek his bliss everything master my guru said that uh, there must be a desire for god so that is a positive desire to the final neutralization of all these these waves but the contrast between the storm that stirs those waves and that which pacifies that is something you've got to go toward the pacification this again is why reason can finally take you into many traps finally you have to be intuitive in your understanding and if you go to a teacher who doesn't understand truth he will t- he will take you astray he will tell you many things he uh, will um say for example that everything is maya so what does it matter what you do well it is maya but as long as you're in maya you're going to suffer in maya as long as you are dreaming in this cosmic dream you will suffer in the cosmic dream you can't just dismiss it by saying oh it's all a dream anyway and if i kill you it doesn't matter these in fact however krishna here in the bhagavad gita is saying it's a dream and therefore kill you've got to understand where he's coming from he's saying that in this world of maya you have to act in the right way and it isn't killing what you're doing is getting rid of those things which keep you out of peace which keep you from peace well there's another argument that the ra- rational mind might say jesus is saying i mean krishna is saying we must get a rid of all sense of possession that i don't own anything and yet the mahabharata is uh, the war of kurukshetra is a war of these warriors the pandavas trying to reclaim their kingdom and arjuna is saying that i consider that a sin killing my my uh, relatives my bad habits okay that's part of it but this thought of getting a kingdom for myself what is what is non possession about that you see these you can't ever be absolute when you try to create a simile and uh, an allegory a metaphor it doesn't work there's always it doesn't it doesn't cover all bases you can say that the ocean is like waves but uh, um the in the end when you've got the waves all comes where are you well we're talking about going into the water and becoming one with it you the reason can't embrace that thought you're not claiming a kingdom for your own ego in this war of kurukshetra you're claiming your kingdom in the infinite that the whole infinite is yours the war of kurukshetra speaks of repossessing your kingdom of divinity and you as a child of god have the same right that krishna had that jesus had that all great masters have that god himself has to be himself 
don't bother to go into all these subtle definitions. I've met many Hindus that enjoy playing with these seeming contradictions. They're fun for a while, but what they finally do is persuade you that reason isn't going to take me there. I have to go beyond reason. Like the story of Alexander, there was the Gordian knot, which any time you tried to loosen it in one way, it would get tightened in another. You couldn't unravel it. And Alexander just took a sword and cut through it. Well, you have to do that with the, with the sword of discrimination. Cut through all this, these fine points of reasoning. In the end, they won't take you anywhere. But what this truth is, is that finally there is the seeming, seeming duality, but it's not a duality. You're going from one place to another, but the duality doesn't keep you in confusion. The confusion lies in the ups and downs between that direction. That direction is in the spine. Once you've neutralized your, your likes and dislikes, your reactive process, then you magnetize the spine because you've centered yourself here. That magnetism draws your consciousness into the spine and that is when the kundalini power at the base of the spine will rise and unite with the infinite. In that unity, yoga means union. And when you've united yourself in yourself, you become one with reality. You don't have to go outward and be, try this. Was what, this is what science tries to do. Get a complete knowledge of everything. Master used to say, don't worry about that. Once you've... Uh, once you don't worry about all the garden of the palace, get to know the Lord of the palace, and then he will take you around and show you and you will come to understand and everything. In a great samadhi that Yogananda had in 1948, just a couple of months before I came to him, he said that Divine Mother took him all over the universe and people could hear him. Uh, he was outward as well as inward in this samadhi. And... Uh, he was laughing and saying, oh, so that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Well, it's fun to think that someday we will reach that point where we understand everything. We know why he's done it, how he's done it, and so on. But uh, in the beginning, we have to follow these rules to get down to that point of absolute concentration where we can penetrate through the eyes at the little point of reference that we have, which is our own self. Center everywhere, circumference nowhere. But you can't cover all those centers. Just go deep into your own center. Once you discover who you are, you'll know everything. You'll be everything. And uh, to know yourself, really, is to know God. Because he, you are a manifestation of God, and there is no other realities. This is why it also said in the Bhagavad Gita, that those who, some people behold the soul in amazement, others describe it, uh, the experience of it, as marvelous, and others hearing it, listen and proclaim it wonderful. Truth is wonderful. Joy to you.